On July 18th, 2023, the south node Ketu will be moving from Scorpio into Libra, while the north node Rahu will be moving from Taurus into Aries, where they'll stay for the next 18 months until January 2025. The nodes are affecting us on a subconscious level and are malefic or stress-inducing energies. And they're not planets, but rather they're points in the sky created by the intersecting ecliptics of the sun and moon. And it's really important to understand what they actually are to see how they're operating in us. So the sun and moon are important for understanding Rahu and Ketu because the sun and moon are the two most important planets in our surface consciousness, which are the two main drivers of our identity, our core identity. And so the crossing of their two ecliptics in the sky creates these tension points that are affecting our identity on a very subtle and subconscious level. The positions of Ketu and Rahu in our chart are showing us the evolutionary path of our subconsciousness from the excessive past life experiences of Ketu to the completely unexperienced area of Rahu. And we need to balance these two signs that they're falling into. And you can think about it as a scale. The Ketu side of the scale has too much weight on it, and so the Rahu side is way up high in the, high in the air, and we need to put more weight on the Rahu side and then create a balance within those two. Ketu and Rahu are creating stirrings within our psyche that can cause unpleasant and even confusing situations in life, but are completely necessary so that we can work on getting out of the automatic and ingrained habits of Ketu and dive into the process of trial and error that is Rahu. And working on these two points of energy in the sky is going to give us the deepest level of psychological progress and growth that we can experience in this lifetime. And you can even argue that Ketu and Rahu are the two most important energies in the sky because they're showing us these lifelong struggles that are just out of our conscious grasp. And these are the two energies that we're inheriting from prior incarnations that are giving us the deepest level of growth that we can experience. So we all have the dynamic of Ketu and Rahu working in our chart. And in the sky, they're doing completely different things than what they're doing in our chart. So it's important for us to first know how they're operating in our chart and what energies we need to be paying attention, paying attention to and working on. But it's also very important to know what they're doing in the sky because what they're doing in the sky can be completely different and contrary to what we need for our personal growth or they can be very supportive of what we need to do for personal growth. So if you're interested in knowing on the node's influence in your chart from the Vedic perspective, see the links in the description of this video. On the earth-wide scale, the positions of Ketu and Rahu are serving as this underlying primer of subconscious energy. And as you're going to see in this transit, they're going to be acting very similar to a powder keg that can ignite quick and make very decisive and fast events happen. People are going to gradually grow more dissatisfied with Ketu's position in Libra while feeling more magnetized to go towards Rahu and Aries. So first of all, Ketu and Rahu are moving from two female signs, Scorpio and Taurus, into two male signs, Libra and Aries. So the subconscious urges will move from focusing in on our internal world, which are the what female signs develop in us, and the subconscious urges are going to instead be focusing us on the happenings in our external world. And the external world is what male signs develop. And so they're also moving from two fixed signs into two movable signs or cardinal signs, showing us that the subconscious urges won't be this fixed attitude of continuing down an already set path until its conclusion, and instead will be more of the movable sign attitude of feeling more sped up, quicker, a more urgent and an urgency to them, and there will be a more pronounced drive to actively affect changes onto our external world around us, rather than to cautiously observe our world and make slight changes as we move forward, as what fixed signs do. So let's start with Ketu moving into the movable air sign Libra. Ketu is this very internalizing energy which causes this tension 
that makes you want to stay at home and work on something that you have a talent for, something that you can become an expert at. But the problem with K2 is that it creates this subconscious desire for complete perfection and absolutes in whatever sign it's in, which as we know is impossible to have an absolute perfection on earth. So the more we go into the Ketu sign in life, the more dissatisfied we're becoming until we start working on the Rahu sign. And that growing dissatisfaction is really important to keep in mind because we're searching for absolutes in that Ketu area. So firstly, Ketu moving into Venus's sign Libra is going to be affecting our personal and professional relationships, which can make people feel more subconsciously hard-lined about what they feel they need for themselves or what we deserve to receive if we're going to give anything of ourselves. So relationships is the first place to, to start with with this transit and that Ketu is causing this need to want to be perfect in relationships. So in the next 18 months it can cause people to see a lot of faults or nearly imperceptible cracks in both their business and romantic relationships. And even if you're feeling good about these relationships overall, it can still give this extra push towards doubt and scrutiny about any even slight problems that there may be. Or it can cause you to notice very big glaring holes in where you need to improve on in relationships in your life and seek to perfect them. But again, to the point of absolutes, which we have to be very careful of, with Ketu, we can never have this absolute perfection in relationships. Ketu and Libra will also cause the subconscious urge for people to become overly dependent on the security of their significant others or in their relationships, which can cause a person to make too many compromises for the sake of feeling secure and choosing what's easy to do rather than what's necessary to do. So be careful not to be overly cautious and risk averse in business affairs specifically because since Ketu wants this absolute security, it can cause people to hold out for too long to get quote unquote the perfect deal in something. And I think there will be plenty of belt tightening in the economy and the business world in the next 18 months and the urge to consolidate resources. Uh, as we're coming off the wild spending sprees that the central banks partook in in the last uh, two to three years, or, the la or from 2000 until 2002. As an air sign, people will become more and more dissatisfied with diplomacy and cordial communication, which is a trend that's already well underway considering the growing divide between political opinions amongst people in Western countries. In fact, Libra is a sign that has the ability to instigate wars and armed conflicts because both sides of the conflict are at odds and unable to agree on what the other side is offering them and diplomacy eventually breaks down because one side will say, I want this, actually I need this, and the other side is saying, no, I need this, and eventually the tensions escalate, diplomacy falls apart, and a, war, and a war breaks out because both sides are so adamant about what they need and are unwilling to make a trade for what they feel that they deserve. Those are all Libra qualities. I believe that both Russia and NATO will become more hard-lined in the current war in Ukraine and neither side willing to cede any political or strategic ground that it hasn't already lost or taken. And we've seen clear signs of this happening already, but Ketu and Libra is going to make both sides tighten their grip even more on what they're willing and unwilling to do. I think that any ceasefires will be very short-lived if there are any ceasefires at all. So expect that the war to become even more entrenched, both sides becoming even more adamant about winning. Rahu is a much more wild and dangerous energy of these two and it should be paid attention to with a keen eye, especially in your own chart. Rahu's energy pulls us into the areas of life where we have little experience, and so can cause us to make very intense and sometimes even humiliating mistakes, and it's forcing us to learn through trial and error. And instead of the introverted Ketu, Rahu is just the opposite. It's this external thrust into this 
forest of the unknown of life where we have to hack our way through very intense and difficult situations and survive through trials by fire. Kind of like surviving in the woods, what do you do? You just have to get things done and do what you have to do. You're completely unprepared to deal with that, that situation. So Rahu's going into Aries, which is the sign of adventure and independence, which is going to give this subconscious urge to, quote, go it alone, to pioneer into totally uncharted territory in life, whether that be a physical territory or mental territories, to do difficult things and to challenge ourselves. And hopefully the best would be to pave a completely new road that requires an immense amount of courage and steely will to survive through. So Rahu and Aries, and Aries is ruled by Mars, Rahu and Aries have a lot in common actually. So come to expect this subconscious urge to play out in seeing that very unusual ideas, uh, ideas that you may have considered to be crazy or options that were just not viable at certain points, all of a sudden these kinds of crazy ideas are much more plausible and maybe even be attractive to you now because Rahu is giving this urge to go do something completely different. And Aries is a sign of doing things com in a completely original way. So, but the problem with Rahu is that he's creating illusions and false ideas about his position. And so Rahu in the chart is a must for us advent to adventure into, to balance our subconsciousness. But Rahu in the sky can present us with very tempting options, which are not all that they appear and can be very detrimental to us if we're not careful about what he's doing and about what we're really logic where we have to use our logic when dealing with Rahu because he wants to just do things subconsciously. He wants to just burst out and do something very immediate. But we have to be very careful with this kind of energy. It's very explosive and can cause us to make big mistakes. This means that in the next 18 months the earth realm will have this underlying pressure to take major risks that may not pay off if they're not calculated and executed properly. So Rahu can give big successes, but just as quickly take those successes away. And Rahu and Ketu are always on opposite sides of the zodiac, 180 degrees apart. Aries is the opposite sign of Libra, and Libra is the sign of exchanging value with others, which means that Aries is about that independent spirit and about going against the grain about what the rest of society is involved in. That begs you to ask the question, do I need to be more independent person in my life? Or do I need to make more practical compromises in life? For some people, Rahu transitioning into Aries is only going to compound problems of being too independent. While for other people, it can be a fresh new push on making a substantial change in your life. Again, it's all dependent on what's in your chart. Keep in mind, for the next 18 months, there's going to be this push to be more independent and to do things you're always afraid to do, but which required a, an original mindset and doing things for yourself and not for other people. Aries is a fire sign, so expect Rahu here to ignite within us this subconscious inspiration to actualize what we really need and want for ourselves. It's going to be pushing us to think more about what is my job in the world what is my contribution and that doesn't depend on what other what other people think of me it's finding that internal fire within yourself and rahu is going to be stimulating that the digital age has made people much more apathetic and complacent so again this transit can stir up this burning desire to do something in a completely different and courageous new way something that is way outside of your comfort zone and to explore and to explore new ideas and, and concepts with a kind of reckless abandon and a lack of fear of where they might lead you. And again, that point of fear is really important. Rahu can make you feel afraid to go into that area of life or that subconscious urge you're naturally afraid of. But if you're going to be pushing towards doing something original, you have to learn to get rid of that fear factor. So the next 18 months will certainly be a great time to learn something new and to embrace trials by fire. So I'm really interested to hear in the comments what you think about this transit can mean for your life and what it could possibly mean for the world at large. 
Thank you for listening. And again, if you're interested in knowing about what Rahu and Ketu are doing in your chart, we can do a reading together and the links to find those readings are in the description of this video.